Hi again, so in the last video I talked a little bit about nouns and all the cases. If you remember, I said that each noun belongs to one of five declensions. And for each declension, there is a set of unique endings for each case. To decline a noun just means to list all the cases for that noun. So you must be wondering, well, how am I supposed to know all the cases for all the nouns? It turns out all you need is a dictionary entry, which I talked about in the last video and will explain more in depth in this video. And you also need to know the endings for each case in each declension. In this video, we'll be discussing the first declension. So now you must be asking, well, when you look up a noun in a dictionary, how are you supposed to know what declension it belongs to and how are you supposed to decline the rest of the noun? It all boils down to how the words end. I used this example in the last video and I'll use it again. So, um, if you remember, it's Puella, Puellae, feminine, and it means girl. Okay, so in the last video I explained that the first word is always the nominative singular, the second word is always the genitive singular, the letter M, F, or N stands for the gender, which is masculine, feminine, or neuter, and lastly you have the meanings, or single meaning. But I also said that this dictionary entry tells you what declension the word belongs to and how you're supposed to decline the rest of the word. I'm going to go in kind of backwards order right now and first explain how to decline the rest of the word. Like I said, it's all about the endings when you decline. So if the noun belongs to first declension, you assign first declension endings. If it belongs to second declension, then you assign second declension endings. Um, and so on and so forth for the third, fourth, and fifth declensions. So now I'm going to give you the first declension endings, and I'll also write down how the word will be translated if it has that ending. And by the way, you do need to memorize these endings. It may seem tricky at first, but the more you decline, the easier it gets. And if you practice a few nouns a day, you'll have them memorized before you know it. So first I'm just going to make a list of the cases like I did in the last video. But what you'll notice is different is that I'm making two columns one for singular and one for plural. It turns out that if a noun is plural, it will have different endings than if it were singular. So now I'll go ahead and make my chart. And um, since this is only like your second time uh, being exposed to the cases, I'll just write out the cases instead of abbreviating them. So nominative, genitive, I don't know if I spelled that right, I think it's genitive. Um, next comes dative, accusative, and finally ablative. And if you remember, I said in the last video there are really seven cases, but the last two are so rarely used that we just name the first five, and you'll only be asked to do the first five on a test probably. So you have your singular and your plural. You make two separate columns for them because, like I said, they have different endings. Try and make a straight line for my chart. Okay, so now I'll give you the endings. A, I, and if you remember I said the A-E is pronounced I. I, um, A, with a macron. Plural, I, uh, genitive plural, all, arum, excuse me, uh, dative is is, accusative is os, and ablative is is, again. So now let me show you how each case is translated. And I know I did this in the last video, but it's always good to keep on repeating charts, especially when you're just learning. So, um, I'll just write off to the side, nominative will be translated um, just the word itself because it'll be the subject and if you think about it you don't really change the form of the word or really add anything to it if it's a subject. Um, genitive so shows possession, I'll just abbreviate that, possession so it will be translated as of something. Uh, dative is the um, indirect object so you say to something or often someone. Um, accusative is often the direct object. 
And again, like the subject, you don't really add anything or change anything usually. Um, sometimes it just depends on the word. And then with ablative, I told you you can have many different forms, but for now you can know uh, by something or with something. Make a comma right there. And with your plurals, it's going to be the same, um, except obviously the noun would be plural. So it would be, let's say the for girls, you would just say, I mean for the puella, um, if it's in the nominative, um, excuse me, the nominative plural, you would translate it as girls. It's If it's in the genitive plural, you would say of the girls. Um, to the girls if it's plural. Um, just girls, direct object, and by or with the girls if it's plural. Okay, so now that you know the first declension endings and the translations of the cases, let's decline the noun. And I'll use Puella again, just since we've been using that so far. And like I said, the dictionary entry will tell you how you're supposed to decline the noun. Like I said, the first word is nominative, and the second word is genitive in your dictionary entry. So if you know the endings for nominative and genitive, first of all, you can tell that the noun belongs to the first declension, since it will its endings will match the nominative and genitive singular endings for first declension. And second of all, you can also cross off the endings and get, get your stem, which in this case is puel. And I'll show you by crossing off the endings, because if you see here, nominative singular ends in a, ah, this is the nominative singular, you cross off the a, uh, genitive singular ends in i, and again, you cross off the a, e ending, and it turns out, in this case, your stem is puel. So, let me make another car chart, and this time, I will um, abbreviate, so it doesn't take as long to write out all the cases, so nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative. And there's a little um, mnemonic device for this. Uh, never go down across a bridge. Um, nominative, N, never. G, go, genitive. You get the idea. Okay, so I have my cases down. Make a line. Singular, plural. And there we have our chart. And then, what I'll do now, I'll scroll up, uh, there. Um, then you're going to, I'll use the same color um, right here that I underlined the stem in. You're going to write down the stem for each of the boxes, or each of the cases, in both the singular and the plural, because you're going to have to add your endings onto this. Just copying it down everywhere. Okay, so now that you have your endings, I mean, now that you have your sum written down everywhere, you can go ahead and add your endings. And just look above at the chart. For now, if you don't have it memorized, that's fine, you just learned it. But uh, soon you'll have it memorized and you'll just be able to copy them down uh, after your sum. So I'll just do them again. Just copying from above here if you want to follow along. Ah, I, I. Um, ah, I, arum, is, as, is. So this would be puella, puellae, puellae, puellam, puella, puellae, puellarum, puellis, puellas, puellis. Okay, so, um, by the way, almost all of the first declension nouns are feminine. It's extremely rare to find a non-feminine first declension noun. So if during a vocab test you forget what gender a first declension noun is, it's a pretty safe bet to assume that it's a feminine. Um, and again, the dictionary entry for the feminine case will end in ah, uh, or the first declension will end in ah, uh, I. And that's how you know it belongs to a first the first declension. Excuse me. So that was first declension just now. And in the next video, we'll be talking about the second declension. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or view the videos as many times as you need. I know this is a foreign concept, no pun intended, um, <clears throat> especially for those of you who are 
unilingual, I guess, and haven't really had any experience with Spanish or French because um, I know you um, often decline or conjugate in uh, those languages. Um, but for now, that's first declension. Thank you for watching, and next up is second declension.